Hello, I'm Penny Schilling. My husband, Bob Schilling, is a proud owner of a barge. He insists it's called a narrow boat, but believe me, he barges into things, and other barges barge his barge. They're all barges. Yes, it's narrow and it is a boat, but stop barging into things and I'll stop calling it a barge. I'm sure there'll be plenty of comments on here about the difference between a barge and a narrow boat. Does this face look like someone who cares about argy bargy? Be careful. Anyway, I'm here to talk about toilets on a narrow boat, from a narrow boat widow's perspective. Essentially there are four different toilet types for use on your narrow boat. Let's have a look at the pros and cons of each type. My ideal narrow boat toilet is not only self-cleaning but, is a combined bidet, with a pleasant rinse of warm scented soap, followed by a gentle jet of heated air, and automatic flush. The urine is freeze-dried, ground into granules, as is the poo and ejected into aroma-free blocks that can be used as fuel on Bob's beloved stove. Meanwhile, back in the real world, the first of the four options is the pump-out. This one looks very much like a conventional toilet. However, it sits on top of a tank. Picture this in your mind, a tank, directly under your toilet, and that tank contains the poo and pee of everyone who has graced that toilet since the last time it was emptied, human waste, stewing in its own festering vile mud. Lovely. You would be forgiven for thinking, out of sight, out of mind. Sorry, it doesn't work like that. And that famous saying, you can't polish a turd. Let's add more stark reality to the mix, literally. You've finished doing a poo. You reach out for your favorite quilted luxury brand of toilet paper, only to remember that it's a big no-no. You should be using cheap, lightweight, biodegradable toilet paper, like a supermarket's Billy Bargain budget brand. I'm sure some feral boaters use the nearest bunch of leaves whilst squatting in the towpath hedgerows. And some cyclists, joggers and anglers, but don't get me started on that topic. I digress. Poo finished, bum wiped, other bits delicately dabbed and now, under normal circumstances, we would simply flush the poo away, gone and forgotten. Sadly, the all-too-common process of the narrowboat poo has only just begun. You need to dump your waste into the storage tank. To do this, you have to open a flap between the toilet and the tank. Don't worry there's a lever. This simple action may invoke the most deadly, ungodly stench. Let's be honest, several hundred liters of liquid slurry that could be used in warfare is about to waft through your vessel and surrounding environment. The worst part is if you are still sitting on the throne, that stench will rise through your legs and become upwardly mobile to the point where you might even taste it. In fairness, you can put additives in your tank to reduce and mask the smell. I'll produce a video about those soon. The tank I mentioned that your throne sits upon may also be built into the space beneath your double bed instead. So, it's far away from any action, but when you lay snuggled amidst your warm duvet, peacefully dozing off to the sound of the gentle slapping of canal water against your hull. That's not what's really happening, sorry. It's actually sound of the waste swirling about from beneath your bed. Sweet dreams. Hey, people pay good money for those sounds on self-hypnosis recordings. There is a slightly better option. Option number two. I did it again, another pun I dropped. Whoops, that was another one. A pump-out toilet fitted with a macerator. It's like a blender. It chews your poo into little lumps that it can be sucked through a narrow pipe and into the tank that is probably under your bed. So, I've graphically described the cons of the pump-out toilet. What are the pros? Well it's probably the closest you will get in terms of style and functionality to the one you are used to in civilization. The payback for this convenience, see what I did there too, is that you need to take your boat to a sanitary station every few weeks for a suck out using a powerful pump at the cost of between 15 to 20 quid each time. So much for spending a penny. That's not all. You will have to keep an eye on the weather. If the canal is frozen or you can't move your boat, you simply can't empty your toilet. So you may wish to carry a cassette toilet on board for emergencies. 
Finally, they can leak. The early warning, but too late signal is when you witness a stinking brown thick, muddy stream flowing down the boat in your general direction, like something from a horror movie, accompanied by the stench of rotten corpses. Heaven knows what that will cost, it doesn't bear thinking about. I'm sure many people have enjoyed years upon years of leakless pump-out toilet systems on their boats. Those who like the KISS keep it simple stupid method, may prefer the cassette toilet system. Think of the cassette toilet as being like a scaled-down version of the drop-through pump-out toilet that I mentioned earlier. There is still a flap between the toilet bowl and the waste tank that you need to open with a lever to drop your waste into a smaller tank this is no more than 20 liters, far less than the pump-out tank. Is 20 liters a lot of wee and poo? It's probably the bowel and bladder movement of two people for two days. There is a skill to be learned in the art of using other people's toilets, when and where you can, plus refusing the use of yours. If you like a good powerful bowl cleaning flush to rinse away stubborn logs and nasty skid marks, not that I do any of those, you will be bitterly disappointed. Gravity and a good diet are your only hope. The more disinfectant and water you use to clean your toilet, the quicker it will fill up, and of course, need emptying. Where do you do that? No, not overboard. It is certainly not bucket and chuck it. When your toilet is almost full you need to embark upon a ritual of removing the cassette. It gets easy. Carefully keep it in a horizontal position to avoid any of the foul stinking contents spilling as you negotiate through your boat's narrow corridor. 20 liters of human waste is not light, but great for your workout. That's only half the battle. You still need to empty it in a proper and working Elson disposal point, I say working, but I need to add one that is in a condition that won't make you gag. Are you getting the picture? Much of this is about planning your route and off topic, so I won't go into the cruise management side as I'm merely the passenger and cabin mate. What is an Elson point? Some may ask. Elson first introduced the chemical toilet a hundred years ago, and like the word Hoover, Elson has become the generic term for both toilet fluid and chemical toilets. Marinas and campsites often refer to their chemical disposal points as Elson disposal points. They are not a venue where you would stop for a pleasant chat about cyclists, canoes, joggers, dog walkers and anglers. All very nice people I'm sure. Emptying yours and other people's human waste down a big sink, and rinsing the cassette out is not nice, so I personally delegate the responsibility to Bob. The jobs are Bob's. Option number three is composting toilet. These seem to get bad press, usually by those who have never had one, but know everything about narrowboats and post their views in every narrowboat group going. I did think they would be horrible smelly buckets of manure, but heaven for desperate festival goers. I now know they cannot be further from the truth but no doubt an anti-composter will preach their views. In fairness the early composting toilets were, well, crap. You had to dump both wee and poo into the same tank, just like the pump-out or cassette tanks and they stunk to high heaven. Modern designs are now amazingly effective and virtually odor-free. Until of course someone releases their curry remains. We is collected in a container that is attached to the front of the toilet base and needs to be emptied almost every day. The poo container lasts much longer before the need to be emptied. Even more if you dispose of your used toilet paper in a bin, rather than the poo container. Someone may need training to seal his used toilet paper in bags, and not leave it exposed in the bin. Disgusting habit. They are unisex in the sense that we all, male or female have to sit to do their business, to ensure they are firing in the right direction. Number ones, your wee goes to the front, and number twos, your poo, goes to the rear. That was not a pun. Now, let's talk dirty. The wee bottle is emptied into a standard Elson point or used as a fertilizer if diluted in a ratio of one part wee to eight parts of water and if you have permission you can dispose of it on nearby land. 
The composting tank has a quantity of peat moss or other recommended medium into which the poo is turned into the same consistency as soil once dried and you can bag it and bin it in normal household rubbish bins. There's always a healthy debate about the disposal of human waste in these narrowboat forums that abound with experts. The last option is number four, combustible toilets. The thought of combustion worried me, even though I am hair free, it is no less scary sitting on a flamethrower toilet. The last option is number four, combustible toilets. The thought of combustion worried me, even though I am hair free, it is no less scary sitting on a flamethrower toilet. Buying the unit and having it installed isn't the end of the expense, the toilet burner uses propane gas for each incineration, the burner roars into life after four deposits of poo. Two people living on board with healthy bowel movements may generate one or two burns each day. The burner runs for 40 minutes during each cycle, so that amounts to one or two hours of propane being burned each day. That's probably where the risk of getting burned is, in the purse and not the bum. Forking out say four grand, and then there's the additional cost of gas, electricity and greaseproof paper for wrapping poo into parcels. Yes, we still have to dispose of it. There's no escaping the job of sticking your hand in the toilet even though the poo has been cremated, unless you have a bob for the job. So, here we have it. The great toilet debate in narrowboat world. Either myself or Bob will be doing some more of these videos, so please like this one, and subscribe so you get notified of new videos when they come out. I hope you have enjoyed it.